Hello, welcome to chapter 17. Here, we're going to take a first few uh, steps into the world of electricity and magnetism. Well, magnetism is for A2 mainly. So in AS, we're going to look at the foundation of electric fields like this chapter. And we're going to look after this a few chapters about electric circuits and things like that. I know some of you may feel a bit squeamish with this kind of stuff because you can't really see it. Like electric current, huh? Potential difference. Electric field, huh? How to see? You can't just see it. I mean, our eyes cannot see it. But take a look at the picture um, behind these words here. What is that? That is what we call a plasma globe. Some middle thing, red color glowing and then electric electricity stuff coming out. And I actually have one with me now. So let's use that to start off the chapter. We we'll start off with a brainstorm to think about the plasma globe. Uh, give me a second before, while I uh, switch around my stuff. First, here it is. A little bit small, so you can't really see that. Let me change up my background and switch that. Okay, so here you can see this is what we call a plasma globe, right? Like what I say, the, you know, the, the, the round globe. In the middle, can you see this thing? It's got reflection. In the middle, ah, like that. That is, you can call it an electrode. That's why we're going to pump in lots of energy using the wire plugged into the socket. And then you will see all the beautiful stuff that happens. But to see, you need to turn off the lights. Because oh, if I just turn it on here, you can't see. So let me turn off the lights for you. Okay, wow. Pardon the pixelated picture. So here's the plasma globe. I'm going to turn it on. And you get something like that. It's so pretty. Wow. So the brainstorm question is, Look at the pattern of the, you know, those things we call tendrils. Look at those tendrils. Why is it shaped that way? You see them all go, I rotate the thing. Yeah, I rotate. They're just going in all directions away from the middle part. Why? Take a good look at it and wonder why. Okay, hopefully you got to think of it. Huh? Like, huh, why is this round? Huh? It's also, by the way, not very big. Kind of half of my head. Like that. Okay. So, the idea is that there is some electric field stuff going on. And usually, we cannot see the electric field. But this thing helps us to see roughly what is happening inside there. Okay, the physics of this is actually very, very complicated. But let me just bring it down to the basics, okay? The middle electrode can be positive or negatively charged, whatever it is. The outside will be of a different potential. So, the electric field line is in a certain pattern. And you can actually kind of visualize how the pattern will be like based on all these tendrils. Okay? Fun stuff, you can play with the plasma ball if you have one near you in the library. If I put a finger here, you see the electricity on the left side? It's kind of like a mini lightning bolt shooting at my head. I don't feel anything actually. Okay? Pretty cool stuff. But a sneak peek of previous, pre, uh, future chapters is also. There are all kinds of energy and feel stuff going on. So much that if you have a light bulb like this, this one is from the roof one you can take out. Fluorescent tube. If you put it near the plasma globe, it will light up. You see that? It's not even connected. What magic is this? Okay, that is called magic. No, it's not magic. That's called science. Which makes for very fun science experiments if you wanna want to ever impress people. Ugh, like you have this fluorescent tube you take off from the roof up there. You can do fun things like this. And then you say, oh, I become a lightsaber. No, I become a lightsaber. The light become a lightsaber and this is like, I become a Jedi. It's glowing. Why is that? Well, that will be in a lot of chapters to come. The future chapters related to electricity, magnetism, and atomic physics also. About why this plasma globe's energy can suddenly fly out and then light up this thing. But anyway, this chapter will only be focusing on the electric field part of it. The main idea of this demonstration is there's stuff we cannot see. It's okay to not be able to see it. Sometimes we can see like this, thanks to noble gases. I don't know if this is argon or what gas inside there. But thanks to stuff like this, we can catch a hint of what is happening in the invisible. And we can see its effects. Pretty cool. Okay, and I cut this halfway, wow, suddenly I absorb the energy. I'm just using very non-physics terms. So anyway, you can impress your family if you find a plasma ball or your friends. 
grab a fluorescent tube and you can pretty much have a lightsaber in your hand and be like, oh, look at me, I have power. <laughs> anyway, so that's the plasma globe. Remember, electric fields are there. We can't always see them, but sometimes we can visualize them. Okay, time to turn on the lights. Let's put this aside. Okay, so what is happening here? We briefly mentioned electric fields, right? But what, what electric fields where and how? Let's turn to a, not this one, this one. Okay, so today we're going to look at only the electric field part of it and we're not going to go into like super complicated stuff because that is for A2. <laughs> so grab a piece of paper, take some notes and we're going to look at how to define an electric field. What is it? How to draw it? And other things like that. Okay, so let's zoom in on this thing first. So firstly, we need to know, before we can calculate everything, we need to be on the same page. We need to be able to describe things. So the first thing of the day is an electric field. What is that? Ah? How to define? At A-levels, there is a certain uh, definition for you to know. You might want to write this down. And that is, what is electric field? An electric field is, you can say, a region of space. Of what? Ah? What happened in that space? A region of space where a charge experiences, you can say, experience what? So you have this space, the charge experiences something. We have got a sneak peek of this in chapter 5 very briefly when we talk about forces, types of forces. That's what we call electric force. So here we can say electric field is a space where the charge experience, did I say an N? Oh, N is N electric force. There we go. The important word is, it's a space. Huh? The space that you have electric field, things like that. And in this field, there are different strengths. Is this field very weak? Is this field very strong? Where is it weak? Where is it strong? That's what we call electric field strength. It's just a way to measure the magnitude of it. Uh, so electric field strength, I put it E field. Also E field, by the way, is a shortcut of saying electric field. So E field strength. We can say it is uh, the electric force per unit charge. Meaning, if I put the charge, do I have something to use as a charge? If I put the charge in the field, say that my body is the field, if the force acting on it is very strong, that means the electric field is very strong. If the force acting on it is very weak, means the field here is just very weak on it. Okay? Same things. There is an equation for it based on this explanation, and you will oftentimes see people write it as uh, E, or another E. Chapter 9 got E, chapter what else got E? This E here means electric field strength. It's actually a vector, but we only want the magnitude of it. So, okay, only the magnitude of it. Electric field strength here will be the force. How much force is acting on one coulomb of charge? Coulomb is the unit that we use to measure charge. So here this is the main idea of electric field strength. Ah. And the unit of this, by the way, is Force is Newton per Q. Q is what? Q is charge. Coulomb. In, in the short form, we just write C. NC negative 1. Okay? It's a good refresher of what we learned before in IGCSE physics and SPM physics. Actually, SPM, I don't know, got learned or not. I have forgot already. So long already. Uh, there's another way you may see people use this. If they say, calculate the electric force, you just rearrange this formula. Electric force acting on the charge in a particular electric field. Okay, the Q, 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 and things like that. Okay, so that's the basic idea of an electric field. Now, one of the goals that you must know how to do in this chapter is you need to know how to draw. Well, you need to know how to do, know whether the drawing is correct or not. So let's practice drawing. But first, I want to show you a simulation on FET. Very fun simulation. You can go play with it as long as you have a browser. Uh, the, the simulation is right here. This is called charges and fields. Okay, how do electric fields look like? In case you have forgotten, this is a good refresher. So let's say I have a positive charge here. Point. Wow, I make the red color so it kind of looks a bit nice. Okay, nice electric charge up there. And I put 
a sensor. This sensor basically means if I put a positive charge near this positive charge, what's going to happen? So look at that mini little arrow up there. Okay, the arrow up there is basically representing the force that we talked about earlier, you know, the electric force. So they'll, because of this positive charge, there's going to be an electric force acting on this. And if you move it around, okay, we move, it, move closer, you see, wow, the force become bigger. Move very close, wow, become bigger. Why? Because this sensor is like saying, if there is a positive charge, what's going to happen? So positive and positive repel. And they are so close means they repel very strong. See, the arrow becomes so big already. Okay? So just remember, repelling. So look at this. If, no matter how I move it, this is going to repel in all directions. So then people came up with a convention. They say, well, let's draw electric field lines. If, wow, all these lines, all these arrow, 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 basically represents where a positive charge will go. Okay? Like that, like you, you move everywhere, it will go, go everywhere. In, in a lot of diagrams, you will see them join all these lines together. So let's take a, some, take a look at the drawings of this. So how would you represent electric field with field lines? Like we looked at just now, if you have a charge, oh, I need an extra pen. Let's make it black color. Okay, so if I have a... Wow, this is too thick. Let's say I start with a positive charge. Ding. So, where would a positive charge go if you put it near here? Go away, no repel, ma. So, that's how we draw the few lines. It will go away, away, away. Oh, usually people draw eight of them, la. North, south, east, west, and everything in between. So that's how you can draw electric field lines for a positive charge. It's always going away from a positive charge. Why? Because this is the direction of a positive charge. Oh? This thing. Positive charge. Like the sensor charge that we put just now. If you put a positive, it will fly away because they repel. Take a guess. What, what about a negative, negative charge? How will the... the Electric field look like. Well, if you guess it or you remember, oh, reverse law. So if you put a positive charge near here, what's going to happen is, ah, uh, same thing. We reverse this. Now we put negative. Negative one, nano coulomb. Wow, this NC means coulomb. Wow, blue color, very pretty. If you put a sensor, this sensor represents a positive charge. Ooh, it's going to get attracted. The closer it is, the stronger the force because the field strength is stronger. Okay? So then, if you want to visualize the electric field, everything is going to be pointing towards a negative charge. Why pointing towards? Because it represents the direction of a positive charge. So similarly, we're going to draw that here. All the, the field lines. This is basically joining all the individual arrows in the simulation. All the field lines will be just, wow, that is not a line. I imagine it's a line, lah, kind of straight. Okay, all the few lines will be going towards this charge here. Now, there are some key things that you must know about electric charge when you're drawing or trying to see whether it's correct or not. Um, look at the negative charge. Where in this whole area would, be, would the electric field strength be the strongest? Where? Okay, okay, okay. Look back at the simulation. Okay, so oh, there's a lot, of, a lot of lines here. So far away, you see the force very small. Very close, the force very big. Means something is getting very strong the closer you get to this charge. In fact, you can show values. Ah, you see this 0 0.87? That is related to the electric field strength that you are uh, experiencing here. Yeah, this is another is another unit of expressing la. But notice how it's two and then three and then three and then four, six, eight, nine, ten, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. What? Means here nearer to the point, the electric field strength is, is stronger. And you can tell that by looking at the field lines itself. So if you have somewhere, let's say look at this level, la. at this level, if you move the test, 
This is not a circle. If you move a test charge around here, here you can say that the electric field lines are very close together. Electric field lines close. Therefore, the electric field strength is stronger there at that particular compared to if you were further out here at this distance everywhere from the center. Then here you can say, oh, no. you see the dif distance from here to here. That's the electric field lines are very far apart from each other. Therefore, the electric field is weaker lor, over there. Okay, so if you ever see whatever material where, wow, the electric field line is like that, very close. Then another one, you see electric field line very far apart. That's just a visual representation of uh, which electric field is has a is stronger and which one is weaker. Closer means stronger. Okay, so in the middle here, they are very close to each other. So this part, okay, strong field outside here, further away, weak field, things like that. Okay, so that's for one charge. It's like when you see somebody very attractive, then uh, if you are close enough, or uh, you start to feel their force of attraction, because you are within their electric field, then you will get a track over there. That is if you have one positive charge, one negative charge. Very applicable to a uh, relationship in life. But what if they actually come together and become a couple and become a pair side by side? What happens? How do you draw the field? Well, you can draw it something like this. Let's start off with a positive negative couple. So here you have positive and then the negative, yeah, they come together, become a couple already. So just remember, the positive, all the few lines are going out of the positive and actually going into the negative. And normally, I would draw everything straight up, down, left, right? But now it's a little bit attracted towards the negative side. So you want to draw a little curve to the other side like that. And the one going to the left is can be straight, lah, but the rest can be a little curve. What about the negative field? Well, everything will go towards the negative field, but attracted a bit to the uh, positive side. So you can draw something like this. Going in, going in, so also going in, all pointing towards the middle. There we go. In fact, you can also connect these two together. Can also. And if it's closer to the middle line, yes, they will definitely connect like that. These are for round shape charges and one positive, one negative. So they attract each other. Very good. So what if there are different charges you repel, repel against each other? You know, think of someone you really uh, are repelled by in life. The moment you are a kind of close to the person, you feel like, oh, want to go further away. That's the repulsive force. And electric charges experience the same thing. They don't like the same type of charge. So if you have a positive charge and a positive charge. Wow, they want to repel. So how can you draw the electric field lines? You remember, a uh, positive charge, they want to repel. But if you draw something like this and then you draw something like this, how can ding, ding, ding. the arrows, well, you can't have arrows joining together. And you cannot have lines crossing each other. You cannot say, oh, like that and then like that. No, no, no. Electric field lines cannot cross each other also. So what you could do is, their electric field lines avoid each other. They repel, ma. they don't like each other. So repel, uh, avoid. Uh. So I'm going to draw a reference marker here. Right in the middle, assuming. okay. So they repel each other. Their electric field lines will not touch each other. They will not connect each other like the, like the other side over there. La. So firstly, positive. Everything pointing outwards. So pointing out, away. Pointing out and away. They don't want to touch each other. Kind of looks like asymptotes, if you want to think about it that way. So away, away. The top one supposed to be, normally will be straight, but because it's experiencing some repulsion, so it will kind of bend a little bit there, a little bit there, and things like that. Okay, I'll just continue drawing everything. Okay. Same thing if both are negative, their few lines will not connect and it won't cross. It cannot cross. It will just 
avoid each other. Like how you avoid people that kind of repel you or you repel somebody that you avoid them. Now all there are a few lines also avoid each other. So notice how I drew these lines here. There's, there are no few lines in this area. This top down left right. So here is not a few lines. This red color is. It's where there's no few lines. Which means if you if you want to calculate the value of electric field strength and force there, the electric field strength will be zero and also the force will be zero. Means if I put a positive sensor charge there, it's here repel, there repel, so it's just gonna sit there. If you place it nicely there, it will just gonna it'll just stay there. There's no uh no net force acting on it there at that position. But I'm gonna rub that off for now. Let's keep this diagram clean. Okay, so this is the main idea to know about field strengths. Where, why the arrow point one direction, what does that mean? And how to draw two or more together, what does that mean? Okay, you, you need to know these basics, so then we go to more advanced stuff, then it's like, huh, why got arrow everywhere? So if you move on to the right side, there are a few more types of few lines you should know how to draw. First one is kind of plates. What is a plate? Well, a plate is something like a phone, you know, phone. This is like a plate, but um, we're going to assume the plates are pretty big, okay? So, we only look at the side view 2D shape, and it's going to look something like this. So, first one, we have a point charge. Let's choose positive, because I want to be positive for now. And then you have a plate. Oh, my line drawing skills. Oh my goodness. Okay, pretend those are straight plates. <laughs> and the plate is negatively charged. So, negative, 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 negative. Okay, I give up. Then, how would you draw the few lines now? You have a plate, and you have a charge. Well, charge usually will be radial. Radial means point out everywhere. Okay, oh, that's like a dance. The radial dance. Up, down, side, and then you go down. Uh, this is how you can draw it. The one in the middle will just go straight there. Imagine if you put a positive charge, where will it go? The direction it goes will be the arrow that you draw. Okay, so the middle one goes straight. Then the rest will kind of bend a little bit. The top one will bend quite a lot to get there. Yeah, something like that. Okay. So that's how you can draw electric field lines for something like this. Uh, if the plate is pretty big, near the plate, the E field is kind of almost constant. How do you know it's constant? The electric field depends on distance, ma. So distance from here to here, is it roughly the same as here to here, same as here to here, same? If roughly the same, then it's constant. Okay, my, my drawing is not exactly constant. Then the electric field here, nearer to the charge, is higher. So the electric field strength is higher. I'll just put an arrow there. Higher. Okay, there are some parts here that will ask you things like that. Where is the electric field sense stronger? Where is weaker? What if it's parallel plate? Oh, I need to draw two plates. Is there a shape I can use? Yes. Let's use the shapes to help us out a bit. Oh, bless one note. We got shapes. Woo! No, no, no. Okay, another shape. Wow, did that just happen? What just happened? I saw the thing appear. Oh, whoa! I can just click it and it appears. Unfortunately, it's in the wrong position. Great. You know what? I'm just going to erase that. <laughs> Do it one more time. And hopefully I get to draw it properly. Oh, beautiful. Whew. You guys just you try out one note for fun, especially if you have a pen or a very good finger to draw. Anyway, we have two plates. One plate is will be we'll call it the positive plate. One plate we'll call it the negative plate. How would you draw the electric field strand between these two? Hmm. Well, let's start with the middle. First, you're gonna have an electric field strand going from. Imagine you put a positive charge where it go. It don't like the positive, it will go to negative. Okay, so this is how you draw the electric uh electric field arrows electric few lines. So then you have quite a few and because it's parallel plates, you actually have a uniform electric field in between. Uniform means the distance between each line is the same, which also means 
that the electric field strength is constant inside this part where it's all straight line. Okay, in this part. And all these lines are 90 degree, 90, 90, 90, 90, 90, 90, 90 degree. How you know it's constant or not? You look at the distance between them. If it's, well, they're all supposed to be the same distance. So, electric field strength everywhere between this parallel plate is the same. Means, if you put a charge anywhere here, or you put a charge here, or you put a charge here, it will experience the same electric force this way. And this one we talked very briefly in chapter 5 about electric forces. There is an exception though. Oftentimes you won't have to, I mean, they won't ask you about it, but just in case, if, this, if these two electric plates are quite short, quite small, at the edge, the very far edge of the electric, uh, of the parallel plates, the electric field strength might be weaker a bit and the electric field lines will be a little bit curved. Like that. Just FYI, at the sides, because nothing else edema, so they curve a little bit. Okay, so that's parallel plates. Um, and the facts to note is, firstly, Electric field is constant inside the the, 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 the between the parallel plates because they're evenly spaced. The electric field lines are evenly spaced. And another word that we will see a lot in this chapter is the word uniform. The field strength is uniform, which basically means the same thing. Electric field constant, evenly spaced, aka uniform. There are actually quite a few other diagrams. Some are very weird. If you try out some of the, the practice questions in the description below, you will see those weird, weird shapes. But I just want to show you some of them. <laughs> Look at these. Uh, first one is, this is very similar to what we looked at. This Q means charge, la, but, but, but. Q2 has a bigger charge, so stronger fuel strength. So it, so it kind of push over to the Push over to the other one a little bit more. See, it bully the fella, repel the fella more. So now instead of the middle line, the dead zone here, the dead zone kind of moved to this point already. So then all the lines will kind of squash over to that side a bit. Okay, that is called if there's unequal positive charge, one charge uh, is stronger than the other. Uh, on the right also, you will see another example, actually a one that is drawn much clearer. Try to guess which one have a stronger charge. Look at this picture on the right, on top of my head here. Which one has a stronger charge? How do you know? Well, you look at the one on the left. Wow! The E field lines are very close to each other compared to this one on the right. So you can say E field very far. Lah. So it means the field strength of this fella is much stronger. So I'll say this Q1 is bigger than this Q2. And since all the arrows are going out, is it positive or negative? Well, it's positive. This one, on the right side, do you think it's positive or negative? Mm, say it's negative. Remember, all going in, you redraw a bit, then you can see all going in. So this one is a negative. More weird stuff. I'll just doodle a few and then we'll call it a day. We'll call it a video. Um, if you have something shaped like Let's say the plasma globe. There's something round in the middle. And then there's a whole globe outside. That will look something like this. You have a, something in the middle. Then you have... Uh, how do I draw a big one? Something big outside. Eh, quite nice. Okay. This is kind of like the plasma globe or it's kind of like on Earth. You have the earth, the ground, and then you have the clouds, the sky, the atmosphere around the whole earth. So that is one example. How would you draw the few lines if the middle was... Let's say the middle is negative and the outside all around is positively charged. Well, you just draw the same thing. Don't panic, don't panic. Positive, you're going out of it. So out, out, leaving the positive. Negative going in, negative going in, 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 and in. Very similar to like how we have the earth and how lightning sometimes strike from sky to ground. Wow. Okay, so this is like the, the plasma globe. 
We can't see the fuel lines unless you have some magic going on there. You put in some noble gas and they start glowing. Then you see, oh, all the... We see stuff going like this. All this kind of stuff. Okay? That's how the plasma globe looks like in real life. But they're actually really following some electric fuel lines. That's why they have that pattern in the middle. You will also see some people give you very strange combinations. They may say, how would it look like if you have a positive charge, a positive charge, and then a negative charge here, like a triangle. Wow! This is like those kind of dramas where you have two guys like the same girl. Oh, then what happened? Eh? You kind of third wheel. Eh? You see the third wheel? This bottom right here is the third wheel. Ah, so how would you draw the charge? Well, firstly, you will have, normally you would draw like that lah, right? Positive, point towards a negative, but then there's also another positive there, so they repel a little bit, so you might need to curve your lines a bit. So if you have three charge or more, it will curve a little bit like that. Okay, they don't like each other, remember? Uh, this one, on the right side, like the positive, like the negative charge, attracted, but it doesn't like the positive, so curve a bit. Then the bottom part, they don't like each other, don't like each other. But they like the negative, so they curve out a bit. They like the negative, and draw all kinds of stuff. Yeah, wrong direction. And they really do not like each other, so here they will repel. They will never touch lines, but they will connect with the negative. The negative will have something like this. Negative really likes this, uh, these two positive, but cannot decide which one to connect with well connect with both lah. okay something like this okay my diagram is a bit like that so the question is at the end of the day where will this negative charge move will it choose the positive charge on the right or the positive charge on the left the answer is this poor negative charge cannot decide if this one is one coulomb this one one coulomb oh, same force of attraction here and there who to choose don't know then the drama begins, and then they make a whole movie about it. But if this one is 11 kulo, wow, very strong force, straight away attract to this, to, to the fella on the left side already, okay? So just remember, these um, charges are like attractions and repulsions, like uh, relationships. You can also figure out how to deal with many, many charges. If you look at um, this fat simulation, you can pretty much put all you want, like that, like that. All kinds of configurations, eight or more. The, let's see, let's put something like that. Yeah. So, all, everything we've been drawing is if you connect all these white arrows together, you will get the fuel lines ready. Okay? So, that's just telling you fuel strength. If you want to know where a positive charge will go, put the sensor there and you will see where is the force acting on that particular charge. Okay? The go here, wow, change direction, go here, change. wow, very complicated. Okay. So go play around with this simulation, go definitely try out some of the past years and you'll be looking at all kinds of fun diagrams like this, weird ones even. Remember to draw, don't just, oh I see, I understand. Actually take a pen and try drawing it because it matters. Okay, so that's what we've been looking at today. Where is my PowerPoint? There it is. Uh, so remember, today's goal, this video, by the end, after your practice questions, you must know how to draw field lines. Must know. And you, if someone asks you what is field strength, you must also know how to define field strength. Um, as a fun challenge, you can also try, if you want to draw, if you ever see an electric uh, superhero like this one up here, how would you draw the field strength of this fella? Haha, <laughs> challenge question. You try law from the head. I, you can assume he's positively charged or negatively charged. I don't know. You decide lah. Negative lah. I say negative. Then you have the lines like that, like that, uh, bend a bit maybe, bend, bend. Wow, too many things happening here. Leh. Basically, all the few lines cannot touch each other, so you need to account, take into account the fella's shape. Eh, the rope not charged one, right? Okay, lah. like that. Wow, here kind of straight. Oh, but got hands there, so it repel a bit. Here, uh, repel a bit, repel a bit. <laughs> so this is my kind of a little bit of attempt to how you would draw the negative feel of an odd shaped object. Anyway, so that's all for today's video. Make sure you go try out the questions and then we'll go into the calculation bit of electric fields and how to think of particles moving in electric fields.